few things today. We're going to talk about terminology for polynomials. We're going to simplify by adding or subtracting polynomials. And then we're going to use laws of exponents when we're multiplying polynomials. Okay? So let's take a look. First, the term constant, and you can just jot these in your notes as you go through them. What does the term constant mean? Constant. If I said to you, the constant on the end of the equation is blank. Isn't it a letter? Not a letter. It, it could be represented by a letter. Yeah, it's something that stands alone. It's traditionally a number without a variable. So if there's like 3x squared plus 2x plus 5, that 5 at the end is the constant. Now, you could also have constant coefficients. So for example, like 2x squared, the 2 would be the constant. It's also called the coefficient. Okay? So again, the definition of a constant is a, is a number that stands alone. A next term, monomial. What is a monomial? Yeah, just one term, one term. So a monomial would be an example, it would be like this. That's a monomial, because there's no plus or minus sign there. Okay? Again, a monomial, you're never going to have a plus or minus sign there. You're never going to have a plus or minus sign there. A number like 2 is a monomial also. So that a number like here, for example, put a comma, like 2, that's a monomial. The number 2 is also a constant. So some of these fall into many categories, okay? Just terminology that we need to know. So if I said, let's multiply the monomial by this, you should know that I'm referring to the thing that's a term by itself. Coefficient? Coefficient? Like uh, what you multiply something by. Yeah, what well, you're multiplying something by, the number in front. So for example, it's that constant factor in a monomial. So if we had like... The, mono, the coefficient would be 3. Okay? So not 3x squared is not the example I'm saying. If we had a monomial, 3x squared, the coefficient is simply the 3. Okay? It's the number in front of the monomial. If? Yep. Like terms are like things that have the same exponent, variable. That have the same variable, good. So, so terms that only differ. In their coefficient, how about let's say that. So terms, so again, like terms are terms that are only different in their coefficients. For example, we had 2xy and 5xy. Those are like terms. They're only different in their coefficient. The variable terms are identical. Okay. How about a polynomial? What a polynomial, polynomial, Chris. Like, um, more than one variable. Yeah, more than one term, or more than one monomial. We could say a polynomial is a sum of monomials. Polynomial, poly meaning many, right? Mon, monomial, mon meaning one. Polynomial is multiple terms. So an example of a polynomial would be anything with more than one term. So something as simple as lines that we've been looking at. 2x plus 4. Now, we'll, we'll see that we specifically call that a binomial, but it's also considered a polynomial. Okay, or something like 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. That's a polynomial. Okay, that's a polynomial. Degree of the variable. Degree of the variable. What is the degree of a variable? Has anybody heard the term degree before? You've heard the term before? Okay, Dave, you want to help us? Yeah, so how many times the variable is repeated? So if it's like x to the third, the degree is? Yeah, so what's the degree? Three. Three. So it's really the highest variable, if we're thinking about, the highest uh, exponent of the variable. Okay, so if we had something like this, let's take a look at an example. 7x squared, mm, y to the fifth. Okay, the degree of the x term is 2, the degree of the y term is 5. Okay, the degree of the x term is 2, the degree of the y term is 5. So it's simply just the exponent itself. Okay. What about the degree of a whole monomial? The degree of a monomial? 
the biggest exponent in the whole, not the biggest exponent in the whole thing. That's the degree of a polynomial, believe it or not. The degree of a monomial, if we had something like 4x to the second, y to the fourth, this degree would be 6. You add the exponents in this case. Again, the degree of a monomial is the sum of all the degrees, the sum of all the degrees of the terms in the monomial. Okay, so this x squared has a degree of 2, y to the fourth has a degree of 4, the 2 and the 4 give us 6. Okay, for a monomial. Francis, answer the next one with what you just answered now. Is the next one you're right with? Yeah, the biggest monomial degree. So if I had an example like this, Okay, take a look at this one. 3x squared, y to the third, plus 2x to the fourth, y to the fifth. What is the degree of this monomial over here? This portion, what would the degree be from the previous line? How do you do it? What would it be? Three. Not three. three. Isn't it the biggest? But the monomial I'm asking, not the whole thing. The degree of this monomial. What did we say in the last line? How do you find the degree oh, of monomials? The degree of, oh, the monomial would be five. Yeah, so the first monomial, its degree is five over here. So let's just write down a little 5 to remember that. And what's the degree of this monomial over here? 9. nine. So the polynomial degree is 9, Arthur. That's where you're getting at the highest. Okay. So again, for a, poly for a polynomial, you look at all of the monomials. You can list the degrees of every monomial. And the one with the largest degree is the whole degree of the polynomial. Again, when it's multiplied, look, at, look back at the monomial. When these factors are multiplied, we added the exponents together, right? To give us a degree of 6. But down here, we are doing them separately. We're doing this monomial by adding the 3 and the 2. We're doing this monomial by adding the 5 and the 4. And then we're seeing which of these degrees is bigger. 9 is clearly bigger than 5, so the overall polynomial has a degree of 9. Wow. Yeah. Again, the degree of a variable that's by itself is 1. So 4x, the degree would be 1. Okay? Any questions on this? It's just terminology. Some of it may be, I mean, a lot of it's definitely review, like terms, coefficient, constant, polynomial. You should know all that. The degree part may be new. All right? The degree part may be new. But the degree of each variable is its individual degree. The degree of the monomial is the sum of the degrees. The degree of the polynomial is the largest monomial degree. So 9 happens to be bigger than 5. All right? Let's go on to the first example. First example is just simplifying. God bless you. It's just simplifying. So please identify your like terms by underlining them in the same color, maybe, just for the first time. So let's underline in red everything that has a degree of 1. So here's a degree of 1, and here's a degree of 1. Everybody see what I'm saying there? Okay, 3x has a degree of 1, and negative 5x has a degree of 1. Then I'll use blue for the degree of 2. Negative x squared and positive 4x squared. Notice I'm underlining the negative sign also to indicate that the negative goes along with the x squared here in the front. And then finally let me use another color. Let's try green. And the constant terms I'm going to underline in green, negative 9 and positive 2. This is the easiest way when you're doing your work to think about it. Okay, Just think in your mind and obviously on a test it's tough to underline colors. But use, use your mind and think about what terms are like terms before you add them together. Now, what should you do when adding together terms? What's the conventional way to add them together? Yeah, so like for the first one, the negative x squared and the 4x squared we're going to put together first, right? So when we take those together and put them next to each other, what do we get for the blue part? What's negative x squared plus 4x squared? 3x squared, and that should be green. Whoops. Oh, no, blue. 3x squared. Okay, again, this is a negative 1 in front of the x squared here. This is a positive 4. Negative 1x squared and positive 4x squared is a positive 3x squared. What do I go to next, red or green? Red or green? Why? A degree? Good. We go in decreasing order of degrees. So we started with x squared, now we'll go to x linear. Then we'll go to the constant term. So let's go to the red part next. I've got 3x 
and a negative 5x. 3x and a negative 5x. Negative 2x. Again, 3x minus 5x is negative 2x. And then finally in green, in green, help me out here. What do we get in green? What do you got? Negative 7. Very good. Again, negative 9 and positive 2 gives you negative 7. Does that make sense for part A? How about part B? I want you to start by identifying the like terms. Identify the like terms in part B. Again, if you're on your iPad, please use colors so you know what you're doing for this beginning part. Once you do it enough, obviously don't worry about that. If something doesn't have a like term, don't underline it. Georgia? Okay. So I only see two sets of like terms in this problem. The first term and the third term are not like with anything else. So we can leave those not underlined. But we'll notice the negative 8xy to the fourth and the 2xy to the fourth. And then we'll notice the 5x cubed y cubed and the negative x cubed y cubed. Now, which of these terms has the highest degree? The highest degree. And this is where we have to think back to what we just did a moment ago. Yeah, the x cubed y cubed. What's its degree? Yeah, underlined in green. Take a look at the green up here. The degree is 6 for these terms both. The degree of the term that's underlined in red is 5. The degree of the middle term here, this one that's not underlined, 2x to the fourth, y, is 5 also. So that order doesn't really matter. And then this degree over here, x squared, y squared, is a degree of 4. So that will come last. So let's put the green together first. 5x cubed, y cubed, minus x cubed, y cubed, gives me how many x cubed, y cubes? Just look at your coefficients again only. Four. Well, well done. Very good. Okay, four of them. So again, we got a five and a negative one, giving us four in green. How about in red? Let's do that next in red. In red. Hannah. Oh, no, it's one. The coefficient. Yeah, remember, it's only the coefficient you're changing. How about in red now? Hannah, I want you to do red. Yep. X, Y, um, to the fourth. good, that's all right. So again, notice when we're combining like terms, we are never actually changing the exponent. That's the whole key here. Everybody see that? When you combine like terms, you're not changing the exponent. You're just looking at the coefficients. And then after that, we can just list what's left. And I'll start with the 2X to the fourth, Y, and then I'll move on to X squared, Y squared. Fix that so it looks like a 4. Okay? So 2x to the 4th times y plus x squared y squared. Any questions on this? I have a question. Yeah. What's more b in front because it says increasing degree of x? Oh, true. Good point, Dave. If we're just doing decreasing degree, it wouldn't matter. But because it does say x, that's a good point to notice. Decreasing degree of x. So we would really switch these two. Okay? We would switch these two. And... Well, technically, the, the 6x to the six x y to the 4th would go to the end if we're looking at x only. So this would just flip to the end. So it would be this one first, this one second, this one third, this one fourth. I apologize, yeah. If we're looking at decreasing degree in general, it doesn't matter. We can leave it like that. Okay? Does, does everybody see what Dave is talking about right there? If you look at just the x component of each monomial, this would be the highest order right here. Let me point so you can see it on the video. This would be the highest order here, and this is the next degree for x, and this is the third one, and then this would be the lowest degree for x. Absolutely. Okay, so decreasing degree of x. All right. Let's take a look at example two. It's no different from example one. So now I'm asking you to find the sum and difference. Okay, for sum, it's pretty, pretty straightforward. So do part A on your own. Please do part A on your own, and then we'll jump to part B.
It should be in decreasing degree. So I'm going to start with the third degree, then go to the second degree, then the first degree, and then no degree. Okay? By the way, the constant has no degree on it. We didn't mention that before, but a constant has no degree. Because technically, you want to know what a constant is? It's what a constant is. It's times x to the 0. What's x to the 0, though? Anybody remember that rule? One. It's just 1. So it doesn't affect the problem. So what would the degree be? 0, right? If you look up here, there's no degree to a constant. Okay? Even though that's not really there. Yeah, Dave? If you have negative degrees, the constant goes first. No. The... Wait, say again? If you have negative degrees, the constant goes first. Negative degree constant first. Because it will tend to oh, before a negative degree? Constant, before a negative degree. Yeah, and traditionally you end up writing that as like 1 over. So like x to the negative 2 is really 1 over x squared. So at the end you would put the plus 1 over x squared. Okay. okay. Take a look at the answer. Make sure yours is right. If you have a question, please ask. We're going to look at part B in a moment. Part B is not difficult, but we have to subtract. So I want to make sure there's an easy way to do this and there's a tough way to do it. Okay, part A we good on? Okay, so part B let's take a look at. So we've got 6y cubed plus 2y minus 5 minus 2y cubed plus y squared minus y plus 2. What's an easy way to do this so we don't forget about our negative signs here? What's an easy way to do this, Hannah? Um, in one of the Expressions? Yeah, expressions. Um, ch like change all the signs to like, if it's positive, change it to negative, then you can just positive. Yeah. Just add it. Very good. So, and it's got to be the second one, not one of them. It has to be the second one. Absolutely. Because if you change all these signs, it would be doing the reverse. Okay? We want the difference between this and this, which means this is the first term, this is the second term. So, what Hannah is mentioning is to make that a plus in the middle and switch all the signs on the right hand side or the right hand expression. So, do this. Make this a plus by putting a plus sign here in the middle. And then switch all of your signs in the terms here. Okay? So again, we've got a negative 2y cubed now, a negative y squared, a positive y, and a negative 2. And now just add it together. Okay, this is always so much easier. It really is. And even me to this day, I'm not joking, I wouldn't mess with you guys. I do this myself. I don't even do subtraction in my head. I remember that subtraction is defined as adding the opposite. That's why we went over that in the beginning of the year. So we can simply add the opposite of all those terms. So we're going to start with a 6y cubed and a negative 2y cubed, giving us 4y cubed. Then we're going to go on to see that we only have a negative y squared by itself. So that negative y squared comes next. After that, we're going to have... 2y and a positive y giving me 3y. And then finally, we've got a negative 5 and a negative 2 giving negative 7. Okay? So again, when you ever have a problem where you're subtracting polynomials, please add the opposite. Okay, so write that down if that didn't click right away. Okay, write down adding the opposite. Adding the opposite. Yes? Any questions on this one? Should be basic so far, but if you have a question, ask now so we don't get confused later on. Because obviously things, you know, are cumulative in math. It'll add on to this. Okay, let's take a look at the next example. A lot of examples today, guys. I apologize. So example three says, simplify the following. How would we go about simplifying this? What is the first thing that we need to do, Tori May? Distribute. Yeah, we have to distribute. Can somebody tell me what this would look like when we distribute? Go ahead, Liam. Um, 4yx. No. Doesn't matter. 4xy or 4yx. Minus 6x. Good. So Liam distributed the x of the first two terms Plus by doing that. Plus Keep going. Plus 4x. Plus 2y. So then Liam distributed this 2 to both terms here. And then the last part. Six y, just distribute, right? The last part is the part that people get tricked up on. Please remember, 
When you are distributing a negative, you have to switch both of those term signs. So you're distributing this whole term to both of these. So it becomes a negative 3xy, but then a negative negative makes that a positive 6y at the end. Okay? Distributive law. Should be basic, but we have to remember with the negative part there. Let's take a look at our like terms. See those like terms right there? I see, let's see, like term here and here. And then finally, the last like terms are here and here. Is that clear? Okay, did the distributive part make sense when we distribute each of them? It does not matter if you called it 4xy or 4yx, but just be careful that you're consistent so you can identify these two as like terms in the green there. Okay? We'll start with what's in green because it has the highest degree. 4xy minus 3xy is? Everybody? Just xy. Right? Positive 4, negative 3. In blue next, negative 6x and 4x, excuse me. And then in red we get? A y, yeah, not x, a y. Okay, two y and six y gives us eight y. So this is no different than the last problem when it comes to adding and subtracting like terms. Okay, this next one is the one that I think is the most interesting out of all. And this had some trouble with, or some students had some trouble with this one last year. So you need to really focus and ask questions if you don't understand this. So this question says the following: Determine the values of a, b, and c that make the equation true. And make the equation true. Alright? Now, it's a bit confusing at first, but what I want to think about, I want you to think about, is the fact that we have like terms over here. And over here we just have the polynomial. And there's an equation sign. If you have one thing on one side, and there's an equation sign, it should be the same thing on the other side, meaning they're equal, right? So let's look at the, let's look at the left hand side first. And let's come up with our like terms on the left hand side x squared has a like term of x squared. What's the next like term in this problem? That one's obvious, that I don't know, that's the easy part. Tori May. Um, there, both, I mean, on the other side, there's a, uh, um, um, I want to stay on the left-hand side. On both sides are like terms, I get that, but for, for, you'll see why in a minute. But stay on the left-hand side. There are more on the left-hand side. Again, remember, a, b, and c, they're not variables in this problem. They're like numbers. So ax, a is the coefficient. See that right here? This ax, a is the coefficient. So think, use, that, use that knowledge to help you, Ida. ax and negative 2bx. Those are like terms. Because the negative 2b and the a are just coefficients. Okay, they're just coefficients. They're not the variable of intent here. And the last like terms, now that you saw that one, is probably... Less or more obvious, less difficult to see. What would the last like term be on the left hand side still? Worth? 2b plus 3a. Yeah, these are like terms, believe it or not. I know they don't look like it at first. I know they don't. The a, b, and c are the coefficients in this problem. The x is our variable in this problem. Okay? And I'm going to show you why this makes sense in a moment. <coughs> What's x squared plus x squared? So that's the easy part, right? Now we've got to go on to the next part. What's AX minus 2BX? What's AX minus 2BX? Uh, well, we factor out Let's go through this. And I want to show you what Georgia said. Here's what she said. She said, all right, we've got AX and we've got minus 2BX as like terms. So look up here, ax and a minus 2bx. Those are like terms. And you can see that there's an x in both of them, right? So if you take this x and factor it out, you're left with a minus 2b. So that's what this really is. So a minus 2b is the coefficient in front of this x. Is that, a, is that somewhat understandable? I'm seeing yes, and then I'm seeing a little bit of like, I don't know. So this a is the coefficient of x. This negative 2b is the coefficient of x. They're both coefficients. So we can factor out the x that's in both terms. <clears throat> and most of you, when you factor it out, you pull it out front. I'm going to pull it out back and put it behind it just so I can see that this is a coefficient. 
And then the last part, 2B and 3A, I'm just going to put them together. And I'm going to put a parenthesis around them to show that it's like they're a constant term. They're one term together. Now this is equal to the right-hand side. And in the right-hand side, I'm going to use the same colors. So if these equations, or these rather, let's say, expressions, because they're expressions, if these expressions on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side are equivalent, what could you tell me about C? What must C be by inspection? Just by looking, Worth. C is 2. On the left-hand side, we have a 2x squared. On the right-hand side, we have a cx squared. So C has got to be 2. That's what that place is. Bless you. So C is indeed 2. Very good. That's the first part. C is 2. But the next part is where it's a little more confusing because it's not obvious. But we do have something we could say. What can we say about what's in red? Come up with an equation. So we have C equals 2. That's our first equation. What's another equation we can come up with from what's in red? From what's in red, Ida? Why is C 2? What's the coefficient in front of x squared? What's the coefficient in front of x squared? For these to be equal, the coefficients have to be the same, right? So the 2 must be C. It can be nothing else. If, if C was 5, it would not make sense. This would not be an equation. Okay. What's the next equation I could say, Dave? Okay. Minus 2B is negative yes, very good. Set the next coefficients equal to each other. But the problem with this one is that this does not give me A or B, obviously, right? It's two variables here. A minus 2B is the coefficient right here. Negative 7 is the coefficient right here. When I set them equal to each other, I'm left with this, which is a problem. Georgia, help us out with the problem. So now what you have to do is you add the under that, right? 2B plus 3A equals 3. Yes. And then Why? Why? Because 2A plus 2B plus 3A equals 3. Yeah. Why are you setting them equal to each other, though? Because they're both blue. They're both blue. <laughs> you, know, you can't use color code on a test. Why, mathematically, why you have to answer? I'll go back to you for the rest of it. Why? Well, because B and A, they're not variables. You just like put in numbers and like assume, like just say like B is one and A is like three. Okay. They'll come out to B. So they're called what? They are both. What are they? They're like terms, but specifically they are constants. 2b plus 3a, that quantity right here is a constant. It's a number. Because we're going to put a number in for a and b, right? So this is a constant, and 3 is the constant, which is why we can set them equal. Continue, because I know you're excited. So 2b plus 3a equals, uh, equals 3. And then you can, oh, you can actually add those two, because it's already negative 2b. So what you get is 4a equals negative 4. Yeah, so a is negative 1. Let's pause. Let's pause and make sure we all see this. So take a look. We get a system of equations. We get a little system here. And there's a negative 2b and there's a positive 2b. So you can simply add straight down. And obviously these are not in the correct order, right? Do you see that? But the negative 2b and the positive 2b add together to cancel. a and 3a give us this 4a. Negative 7 and 3 gives us negative 4. So a is just negative 1. Let me stop there and ask for any questions on that part. We'll get C in a mo or B in a moment, but I don't care about that right now. Does that last part make sense right there? Again, we set the linear coefficients equal. That's in red. Then we set the constant coefficients equal. That's in blue. Okay, so we have the red and the blue here in the A minus 2B equals negative 7 and 2B plus 3A equals 3. We notice that that indeed is a system, so we have to solve it simultaneously using elimination or substitution. We choose elimination because there's already a negative 2b and a positive 2b, and those would cancel. We add them, giving us the 4a equals negative 4. How do I get the b in the last step? What would I do, Worth? Just plug in b to n where two Yeah, so take this negative a, a negative 1 for a, to get b, and plug it in. You'll end up getting a value for b of 3. Okay? Please check that you get 3. So again, how would you get that? We would take this quantity right here and plug it in maybe right there, okay? And then solve for B. So it turns out that A is negative one, C is two, and B is three.
Okay, I think I gave you one or two homework problems on this to practice tonight. Please use the same method we just used. Group your terms according to your like terms, and then set the coefficients equal on both sides of the equation. What you're doing here, believe it or not, you use linear algebra to do this. So in, in calculus, this is one of the things you start with before you go into other things. So you'll see this in Calc. It's actually in Calc 3. It's in the beginning of Calc 3. This is like a prerequisite looking at vectors. So these are vectors. Each of these terms are vector terms. And you can only set the coefficients of each corresponding vector equal to each other. Okay, we're using different terms now like polynomial. All right, we're almost through, guys. Let's look at some rules here. Some rules. So we're going to look at properties of exponents. We're going to take a quick look at four of them. The first rule, a to the b plus, times a to the c is a to the b plus c. Can somebody explain what that means? Good, as long as the base is, is the, same. the same, very good, okay? As long as the base is the same. In my notes on Moodle, the ones that I type up, I go into more explanations about all these rules, showing that like x to the fourth times, or x to the second times x to the fourth is really xx, xxxx, x, 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 giving you six x's and showing how it works. So if you would like to, you're welcome to take a look at that also, okay? So I go into more detail about that. How about number two, zero exponent? Zero exponent is just always going to be one, okay? It's always going to be one. To see a simple derivation of this, very simple, ready? Here's what I want you to do. What's two to the third? What's two to the second? What's two to the first? What do you notice your answer? Eight, four, two, what's happening every time? So what's the next one gonna be if you divide by two? Yeah. So that's a simple way to prove that always. Start here. How do you get from this term to the next one? You're dividing by 2 every time. So divide by 2, get 4. Divide by 2, get 2. Divide by 2 to get to the 1 here. Okay, so every time you do this, just think about what you're dividing by. Divide by 2, divide by 2, divide by 2. Anything to the 0 is indeed 1. Third one, power to a power. What does that rule tell me in words? In words, somebody tell me what a power to a power means. Arthur. Very good. So when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those powers. And I purposely use the same exact values from example one to show you the difference, okay? X to the second times X to the fourth in example one was X to the sixth. But now we're in example three where we raise a power to a power. Who can prove this to me? Who can show why that's true? Why is X to the second or the fourth X to the eighth? Anybody can follow a rule, but tell me, tell me why that's true. How can you show that that is indeed true? Hannah. Very good. Uh, times, not plus. What? Times, you said plus. You, you Very good. So in, in essence, you're really doing rule one. Okay? X to the second to the fourth is X to the second, X to the second, X to the second, X to the second, which is going back to using rule one. Okay? Using rule one. And finally, the last part, the power of a product. Who can tell me in words what I should be doing here for the power of a product? Dave? <coughs> Distribute. <coughs> Distribute the power to each different term or each different factor. Okay, so. How about something like this? What would that become? What's x to the second to the fifth? Very good. Okay, so this kind of a one example, we're combining rule three and rule four, really. So we're remembering to distribute the five to each of these, which, just so you know, I'll put it in blue over here. This is what this really means. Okay, in case you wanted to see the middle step, I skip. When you distribute this five, it becomes what you see in blue over here, x to the second to the fifth, which is x to the tenth, y to the third to the fifth, which is y to the fifteenth. Okay? All right, let's take a look at our last example and we're done. Okay, we did today pretty quickly just because it was a bit of review. These last two examples, I want to take a look at all variables. We just did examples with numbers there, but I want to look at variable exponents. Let's take a look at part A. Let's take a look at part A and let's break this down. How would I go about starting this problem? There's one step that you want to do first.
to make this easier on yourself. Make this easier on yourself. Remember PEMDAS, parentheses. Well, I can't do anything inside the parentheses. I'm done. Then I go to exponent next. So what should I do first? So what does that give me? Just give me the first line, Dave. A to the 2K times... Remember, when you raise a power to a power, you multiply those powers. So when you look at the first part, you have the power of 2 to the power of K. So you're multiplying this 2 times this K. Then you have a power of K times a power of 3. So you multiply this K times this 3. Now that we have this line, what do we do? Same base. What do I do to the exponents? Um, you, add them. you add them, which makes it? A to the, well, it's 2A to the 5. It's not 2A. Remember, you keep the base. You leave, if you add x squared times x to the 4th, the x doesn't change, does it? It just becomes x to the 6th. x to the 2nd times x to the 4th is x to the 6th. So the A is like the X. It's not going to change. But the exponents we have to add. So what do you get for the exponents? Five. Yeah. So we leave the base alone. Okay, again, please leave the base alone. A to the 5K. Does that make sense, the example I gave? Okay, so if you ever get confused here, use easier examples. Think about X to the 3rd times X to the 5th. Well, that's just X to the 8th. You added the exponents together. So the rule here applies the same. Simply add 2K and 3K to give you 5K. Okay? B. Part B. Part B is a little trickier. Mathematically speaking, hold up one sec. Mathematically speaking, if I had this, what would I do to the two in front? Distribute, right? This is no different. So please go ahead and distribute. Go ahead, Ida. They're good on. Let's take a look at that. So here we have, if we're distributing, x to the m minus n times x to the m plus n. That's distributing the first term. Okay? Then distributing the second term, it's x to the m minus n times x to the n. I'm having trouble deciphering to my m and n. m minus n, m plus n, m minus n, and then just n at the end there. Now, if I look at my exponents, this base is the same as this base, so I need to add the exponents together. What's m minus n plus m plus n? Just 2m. Again, take a look here. I'm adding this exponent to this, ex to this exponent. The m's combine to 2m. The n's cancel when you add them together. That's what Ida was asking about with the n's there. Next. I have the same base here as the same base here. So I take this exponent and add it to this exponent. What do I get when I add these exponents together, Liam? Um, X to the N. Very good. Because the ends, again, cancel each other when you add them together. Just like these ends canceled when you added them together. So we've got X to the 2M plus X to the N. M to X to the M. There's nothing we can do at this point. Some students want to try and combine these. But they have, again here, you're adding them together. You cannot add these. They are not like terms. If you like trying to add x squared and x to the third, you can't add them together. Okay? Work on your homework. Please do your homework tonight because your problem sets are due on Friday, people. So don't save this, okay? Again, after school, around 3, 3.15, okay, for office hours.